Okay, we've started. I have hit record on the audio and I've hit record on the video. So we are rolling. Hello there. Hello, listeners. How are you? How are you doing today? Very nice to be talking to you again. The podcast is back after a slightly short break. It's shorter than I expected. I thought that um, I might not be able to record podcasts for much longer if you listened to or watched my other uh, recent rambling episode, episode number 733. Um, I said that uh, the podcast might be disrupted by various things. Um, But anyway, right here, right now, I am able to do this. So hello, nice to be back. Video viewers, hello as well. Um, It's very nice to be talking to you. Okay, so let's get started properly. And hello, and welcome back to the podcast. This is episode number 735, and it's just a rambling episode, which means it's just me talking to you about various things, including whatever comes into my head while I'm recording. Uh, But specifically this time, I am going to talk about these things, uh, being back from holiday and getting back into the podcast zone. Uh, comments about my audio listeners and my video viewers on YouTube because it seems at the moment my audience is divided slightly into two categories. There's the audio listeners, that's most people who who, um, consume my podcast. They do it in the traditional way by listening to the audio episodes. And then I've got a fairly sort of new audience on YouTube. I say new, I've had my YouTube channel for, well, it's like the same amount of time as the podcast, basically, since 2009. Um, but the YouTube audience is odd. Like some, I feel like I've got some new people who only consume the podcast on YouTube. And that's f- because they've been uh, attracted by certain videos I made recently, like the story episodes, like The Mountain and stuff like that. And so that episode went quite viral and it got a lot more views than my normal YouTube stuff does. And so I feel like new people have arrived like, hmm, what's this? I will subscribe to this YouTube channel. So uh, those people seem to be a bit different to uh, the audio listeners. Anyway, I'll talk about that. Everyone's welcome, of course. You're all uh, more than welcome to uh, listen to this or watch this um, content in any way you like. Um, But anyway, two different parts, two different... Oh, it's confusing. Audio listeners and video viewers. It's not that confusing. It's fine. I'm going to talk about some news about moving flat and moving into my new pod room. And as you can see, uh, the move hasn't started yet. I say, as you can see, if you're listening to the audio version, you obviously you can't see that unless you just, unless you have some weird sort of psychic uh, ability to to see uh, me. It's called a camera. (laughs) It's called YouTube. It's not a psychic ability. Anyway, if you're watching, you can see that the the move hasn't started. I haven't moved to the new room yet. And so the podcast hasn't been disrupted yet. Um, I'm going to talk about some common questions from the YouTube comment comment section. I said that I've got various new people who have discovered my channel on YouTube and they all seem to be asking the same questions. Questions that I've answered many, many, many times in audio episodes, but I'll just kind of bang, 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 fly through some of those common questions from new YouTube uh, subscribers. I'm going to talk about Charlie Watts a little bit, uh, the drummer from the Rolling Stones who passed away yesterday. He died yesterday. It's a um, a very sad moment for fans of, you know, rock and roll music or just music fans, fans of the Rolling Stones. Uh, Charlie Watts was a, a sort of really, really important person in British music and he died yesterday and um, it's it's sad and I felt like I should talk about Charlie Watts a little bit. I'd like to talk about him and just pay tribute to him in some way and maybe just tell you a few things about him that you... I don't know, that you didn't know. Uh, We'll see. Um, I'll talk about Charlie Watts um, and the Rolling Stones. Uh, And I'm going to share a couple of comments from the comments section, including one very motivational email that I got from a long-term listener. And then just whatever else occurs to me as we record this. And 
As I said, as well as being available as a normal episode of the audio podcast, this is also available on YouTube with some text on the screen. Uh, the notes and scripts that I'm reading from, you can see on the screen. So you can read along with me and you can spot certain phrases and spelling and things like that. And by the way, if you are watching on YouTube and I feel like I'm going too quickly, I'm flying through things too quickly, you can always pause this, you know, and check the screen if you feel you didn't understand something or you found a new word or phrase. You could always, you know, you could always pause the screen. Whenever I move uh, the text up, right, whenever I move the text up and you see a fresh couple of paragraphs of text, you could always pause the video and read the, the, the text and understand it and then listen to me saying it. You know, you've got the pause button. You can use it. It can be a valuable tool. All right, so, Yes, by the way, you can always pause this and check the screen if you feel you didn't understand something or you found a new word or phrase. Audio listeners, don't worry. I mean, you could pause and rewind. Most podcast apps have a little skip back uh, button that you can use to skip back a few seconds if you want to hear something again. If you feel a bit lost, there's nothing wrong with just skipping back a bit to go back uh, a f you know, a few minutes just to listen again if you end up being lost. So, you know, use these tools. Audio listeners, skip back sometimes if you want. Pause, take a break, continue uh, later. You know, uh, video viewers, if there's text on the screen, you could pause, read the text, unpause, skip back. You know, all those things can help. Um, so, yes, I am reading from a script or from, from notes uh, in this episode. Uh, in this episode, I'm reading from a script which I wrote last night. I wrote most of this last night. I don't normally read from a pre-written script when I do these rambles. A ramble is just when I just talk um, uh, about various things and go in different directions. That's what I call a ramble. So I don't normally read from a pre-written script when I do these rambles, but this time is different. Um, I wrote most of this script last night when it wasn't really the right time to record a podcast. Um, uh, to do a podcast recording, uh, but I still consider this to be a rambling episode because I just rambled with my fingers last night when I typed this, and now I'm just reading out the text ramble that I created yesterday. So it still counts as a rambling episode as far as I'm concerned. And of course, I can just deviate from the script or notes whenever I want. Okay, so stick with me and I hope you enjoy listening to my words as they flow out like endless rain into a paper cup. A cup which you can then take and drink from, metaphorically of course. Was that a Beatles lyric reference? Yes, that was a reference to a Beatles song lyric. Words are flowing out like endless rain into a paper cup from um, Across the Universe by the Beatles. That might have come up in... Um, the episode about Beatles song lyrics with Anthony Rotuno. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, lots of little phrases and things in that one. Um, so yes, um, drink my English. That's basically what I'm saying. Okay, I hope you know what I mean. So I'm in the podcast zone. This is and this is what I wrote last night. So imagine I wrote this last night in my living room downstairs. So here's here's what I wrote. So. I'm sitting here in front of the computer. My wife is lying across the sofa watching a French TV show on her phone and she's under a nice sheepskin blanket that we have. So she is feeling very cosy. I've just made her a cup of mint tea and I've tucked her feet into a blanket because I'm such a great guy and a really wonderful husband. <laughs> Because that's what you've got to do, you see, as a husband. You have to do nice things like that. You've got to make tea for your wife. You've got to tuck her feet into a blanket so they don't get cold. And plenty of other things. It's not just that. There's like loads of other stuff you have to do too. Which, you know, it's it's not an obligation. It shouldn't feel like an obligation. It's more just like, you know, things you do to be in marriage. Okay, am I going to go off on a ramble about being married and stuff? No, this isn't the time. Anyway... So, my wife is comfortably installed on the sofa. The child is in bed asleep. And despite the madness that's going on in the world outside in general, this is a little moment of peace and quiet. It feels strange to be reading out 
what I wrote yesterday as if it's happening now, but you know, that's just what I'm doing. So now I'm sitting with my computer on my lap, but I'm pretty much in the podcast zone right now, meaning that I'm thinking of ideas for the podcast, considering what I've been doing and what I should do next. I know I should be able to record tomorrow as the little one is going to her French grandparents for a few days and my wife has work to do, so tomorrow is podcast day. I say tomorrow, that's actually today in real time. But I'm in the podcast zone now because I'm thinking about podcast ideas and things to record tomorrow. I'm just writing down my thoughts on my computer as they come into my head. I'm trying to write everything I'm trying to write down everything I'm thinking in order to make sure this is actually a rambling episode. I'm rambling everything down in text form here and I'm trying to make it sound like I'm actually spe- speaking normally and not reading from a text. That's quite difficult to read from a text but not to make it sound like you're not reading from a text as if you you know to make it sound like you're just speaking the thoughts that are going through your head. That's quite difficult. You've got to be an actor, haven't you, to do? That's what actors do. Anyway, so what I'll have to do tomorrow, that's actually today, is record this, but make it sound like I'm just saying all of it off the top of my head. I don't know. Listeners, what do you think? Does it sound like I'm speaking off the top of my head, or does it sound like I'm reading from a script? Hmm. I mean, it's you know, parts of it are scripted, other parts are not. So it will be difficult for you to tell which parts I'm reading and which parts I'm just saying without reading. This is complicated, isn't it? Am I making this unnecessarily complicated? Probably. Anyway, go back to the script. Also, I might just go off on a tangent at any point. That's where you just start talking about something else. I might go off on a tangent and deviate from the script if something occurs to me, if like I get an idea or something, or if just a thought comes into my head. So I might go off on a tangent. In fact, what I'm going to do is the, actually the word for word script for this is going to stop soon. And I'm just going to write down some basic notes and then expand on them as I talk into the microphone tomorrow, which is actually today. (laughs) Yeah. So tomorrow is now. Yeah. So are we actually in the past, the present or the future at this moment? I don't know. I think I might have just invented time travel somehow with a podcast. Mm? Uh, These words are from yesterday, but I'm reading them now and you're going to listen to them in the future. So we somehow compressed the past, the present and the future, bam, into one podcast. Um, Uh, Let's just say that in podcast land, time is a sort of flexible thing, a bit like a jelly or something. Okay? Yeah. In Lapland, time is is jelly, which might explain why my episodes are quite long sometimes, because time flexes and wobbles and stretches. What are you talking about, Luke? None of this makes any sense. Sorry. Sorry. Can you get to real content, please? Is this just an introduction? No, this isn't just an introduction. This is the real content. So if you're thinking, when's the introduction going to end? It's never going to end. This entire episode is just one long introduction. And maybe there'll be like one minute of actual content at the end. But it's just one big introduction, okay? I say that for the people who get uptight when they feel like the episode hasn't properly started. Okay, because they're like, the introduction's going on too long. Um, Just think of it like there are no introductions okay that when the podcast starts that's it hmm sometimes these rambling episodes feel a bit weird because i don't know what i'm talking about (laughs) i'm just talking shite anyway so um i do at the moment i do have other episodes i would like to do you know i've been away on holiday three weeks off there are other episodes that i do actually have to do and 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 to be honest to be honest, while I was away on holiday over the last three weeks or so, I was I was actually itching to get back to podcasting. I had uh, I had 
I had lots of ideas popping into my head which I couldn't quite hold on to and as I didn't get the chance to write them down, they've all just <laughs> disappeared into the ether. Little ideas, comments, stories that occur to me at various moments, like when I'm in the shower, you know, just <laughs> oh, oh, that would be good. I must do that on the podcast. Maybe I should talk about that. Just those little moments. But as soon as the shower's finished, dried myself off, got myself dressed and everything and gone downstairs and sort of life continues, those ideas just <laughs> gone. Uh, so like moments when I'm in the shower, but which I instantly forgot. So I was I was quite keen to do some recording again after being away, just to satisfy the compulsive podcasting side of me. It seems that after doing this habitually for 12 years, um, it's hard for me not to do it. If I sort of don't podcast for a while, my brain gets full of like podcast um, speaking, just fills up my head and uh, it's got to come out. So that's what I'm doing. Just, just, I'm afraid, that, I don't know if it even means much. I'm not really get it, making any really solid points here. It's just, I've got to get a load of words out. There's a word traffic jam in my head and boop, 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 they've all got to come out. Okay, get all the words out and then get back to normal podcasting. So anyway, I was I was quite keen to do some recording again after being away just to satisfy the compulsive podcasting side of me. The holiday was fantastic, by the way, and one of the best ones that we've had for ages. I'll tell you about it a bit later in this episode. So those other episodes I could be doing right now. So I do have a to-do list with other episodes that I do have to get done. First and foremost, I do have to continue premium series 31 parts 4 5 and 6 premium listeners you'll know i did 1 2 and p31 parts 1 2 and 3 um, and uploaded those and um so 4 5 and 6 need to be done um so p31 is all about learning english from my mum so you can learn english from my mum as we look at phrases which came up in our conversation in episode 717 learn them properly with loads of examples and that, and also there's the chance to do plenty of listen and repeat pronunciation work with me so you don't just learn new language but learn how to produce it too so i need to continue uh, that premium series and i'll be getting on to that soon i've also i think I sh i'm going to do part four of that War of the Worlds story, um, the conclusion. I asked at the end, you know, would, shall I do a fourth part to this? Are you interested in that? And I, I've, I had enough uh, responses from people saying, yes, please, please do another part of this story. Um, so I think I will do that. Um, I'll need to prepare it, you know, I need to choose which extracts I read out. Um, but I, I, yeah, I would like to do a part four just to kind of conclude the story uh, um, so that's something I'd like to do. Also, I've got like unfinished episodes series that I finished that I unfinished series of episodes. Like, for example, the series which is called "88 English Expressions That Will Confuse Everyone." Remember that I, I did parts one and two um, ages ago, maybe two years ago, and then I was like, "I'm going to do part three, blah blah," and just never did it. And I just it's there. It's kind of par, par, partially prepared. Not, I didn't finish preparing it, and so I didn't record it. So I need to finish that off. It's very unsatisfying. Must, must, have, must have made some of you feel very uncomfortable. Like, where's part three? It must be completed. So I, I've got to do that. I'd like to do more stories like The Mountain, the one that I did recently that seemed to be popular, especially on YouTube. Um, I'd like to read from more texts or books. I'm very interested in just doing that, just like taking a text. Like, there's so many things I could do, um, but one of them is just like take a text. So uh, it could be anything, even just a newspaper article or whatever, and just read it and then break it down for, for language. Uh, there's lots of different types of text I could use for an episode like that. Uh, there's an episode with the Thompsons. That's my family, my mum, my dad, my brother. Uh, which I recorded when I was in England on holiday. Uh, I did manage to record uh, the four of us together. So I've got that. Uh, I just need to edit it together and put it all together. Just audio. 
but that's an episode that I need to work on, so that's coming soon. So fans of my family should be happy because there's a family episode coming soon. Also, I need to do some invitations. I need to invite some other podcasters and English teachers onto this podcast, especially people who've invited me onto their podcasts recently. So those are some episodes I, I need to do. Also, the Edinburgh Fringe is basically, well, it's nearly finished, but the top 10 jokes from Edinburgh Fringe 2021 have been uh, published online. Uh, Chortle.co.uk published an article with a list of 10 uh, popular jokes from the comedy festival in Edinburgh this year. So uh, I like to do episodes where I uh, tell those jokes and then break them down, explain them and dissect the frog, as, as we say. So I need to do uh, the 2021 uh, top 10 jokes from Edinburgh Fringe. And I have a big list of other ideas which I'm slowly working my way through. But I think before I do those ones and perhaps some others, I'd like to just do this rambling episode with you. These rambling episodes are where I just talk to you directly and move from topic to topic, almost making it up as I go along. So just keep up with me, follow along and let the words flow through you like the force in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Feel the English. Feel the English. Let it flow through you. Be the English. <laughs> you can imagine sort of blue lasers and Star Wars and the Matrix type stuff. Like, oh, feel, be, be one with the, with the living English. And listen with me as I chat to you about various things. Okay? So, um, audio listeners and video viewers just want to talk about audio listeners and video viewers and basically Luke's English podcast video viewers hello YouTube people hello if you've recently discovered me on YouTube I just want to say thanks for joining it's nice to have you on board but I did want to say that Luke's English podcast is actually mainly an audio podcast uh, with some stuff on YouTube too so most people listening to this, the vast majority of people listening to my words right now are listening to my podcast on their phone probably with headphones on, using a podcasting app of some sort, probably the native uh, Apple Podcasts app on the iPhone or something, um, or something like Spotify or another podcasting app, or perhaps you're listening on the, um, the famous Luke's English podcast app. So the point is that most people listen to the audio version of this. And I'm saying this now because I'm also recording a video version of this on YouTube and I feel like YouTube is a pretty different audience. All the other platforms, that's like different ways to listen to the audio podcast, are sort of united in one sort of group. That's the audio lepsters. And they are, the thing about the audio lepsters is that they're, they're more ninja-ish I mean that they don't, you know, they don't write comments as often. They are uh, more stealthy. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. They're just numbers in my statistics. But it, it's it's more difficult for them to leave comments because there isn't one, sim you know, convenient place to leave comments if you're an audio listener. So they tend to be more like ninjas, right? Um, listening in the shadows, never actually replying to me, just sort of like silently listening and then when they, and they're just maybe list, leaving a comment sometimes and then returning to the shadows again, slipping away uh, into the shadows where they continue listening. Uh, so audio listeners are more ninja-ish, but they're, they're perhaps a bit more sort of solid, reliable, dependable and loyal, listening to every episode, maybe listening from the beginning to the end a bit more um, consistently than um, the YouTube viewers, but hmm, I don't know. I mean, I don't mean to have a pop at the video lepsters. I don't mean to criticize the video lepsters on YouTube and suggest that they are unreliable or, or somehow disloyal or something. That's not what I'm suggesting. But I'm suggesting I feel the audio uh, listeners are, that that's the majority of my audience and it's they are the sort of stalwarts of, uh, of my podcast audience. And then, um, uh, but yes, but then there's the, the YouTube audience, which is a, a sort of an emerging audience over time and certainly has grown recently because of certain recent viral uh, 
videos that I did, I mean, I say viral, they weren't that viral. Like one of them got, it's had nearly 400,000 views, which is, you know, good. It's great. I mean, proper viral videos get like millions and millions, of course. But um, anyway, f compared to most of my content, um, uh, like The Mountain and The Umbrella Man, those two stories, those those have, you know, received a lot more views on YouTube than normal. So um, the video lepsters on YouTube, they, they seem to have, they seem to be a slightly different type of lepster. I feel like YouTube lepsters are less ninja-ish because obviously when you're on YouTube, the comment section is right there. So it's much easier to write comments and the culture of YouTube is to write comments. So YouTube less, lepsters are less ninja-ish because there are many more comments on my YouTube uh, videos than uh, on the website or anywhere else. Also, YouTube lepsters, hello again, seem to be less aware of the back catalogue of episodes that I've done. And I get a lot of people who've never heard the podcast before, which I know is shocking. Like, how is that possible that there's anyone left on earth that hasn't listened to this podcast? But I, I seem to get more YouTube people on YouTube who are like, wow, I've just discovered this. And they're asking me lots of sort of basic questions that I've answered many, many times before. But the thing about YouTube is that it has enormous potential to go viral. In fact, in a way, publishing stuff on YouTube, it's like swimming in the deep ocean. And you could catch a current and get into some very deep water. I mean, in a good way. Is the metaphor working? I don't know. But anyway, I mean, most episodes on YouTube, right, most of my stuff on YouTube gets less attention than the audio versions, right? Um, but then some videos go viral as they get picked up by the algorithm on YouTube, which is probably responding to the way that people interact with your video, right? And I, and I guess that um, the algorithm... Algorithm, the algorithm, the sort of AI that YouTube uses to filter their videos and promote videos, that algorithm sorts of picks up on um, videos which are popular. So I, I'm not sure how the algorithm on YouTube works, but I guess that it's videos which are getting certain number of views, certain levels of audience retention, likes and and comments and attention if when people are clicking on on the video when they see it if that happens enough then youtube kind of decides okay this video is popular uh let's promote it even more and then suddenly it, it kind of gets promoted more and more and more and that's how these videos pick up more and more views so um this is this is probably a way to uh always present the best content on on the platform right? So a couple of my recent videos went a bit viral. I mean, not a lot, but a bit, which was nice. And so I think I've gained a new audience, but only on YouTube. So YouTube Lepsters, here, right, hello, let me have a quick word with you for a moment, all right? So really, this is an audio podcast that's also got a YouTube channel. And recently, I've been uploading more to it. But really, this is still mainly an audio show. And I have a big archive of audio episodes on my website and in my app. Right? I've been doing this for 12 years and there's loads of stuff. It's, you'll find quite a lot of the archive on YouTube, but not all of it. There's a large gap where a, a large gap of audio episodes I still haven't made available on YouTube. So not all the episodes are available on YouTube and they're not all on Apple Podcasts either because Apple Podcasts has a limit to the number of episodes that will show up in its list. And if you scroll down through the episodes on Apple Podcasts on your phone, you'll find that at the bottom it sort of stops, I don't know, maybe 100 or 200 episodes or something like that. So not all the episodes are on Apple Podcasts either. But they are all there on my website with episode pages for each and every single one of them. And those episode pages often contain either a script that I'm reading from or notes that I'm reading from or language notes or something um, and also audio download links where you can all download the audio file for each episode so you know I just wanted to say YouTube uh, Lepsters 
uh, hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that like uh, button and click the bell icon and all those things. Um, uh, but also check out my website and check out my episode archive there. Should we have a quick look? Come on, let's have a quick look then. I'm going to go to my website now. Video viewers can see. Here's my website. It looks like it was made in 2012 and that's probably because it was maybe 2013. It looks a bit old-fashioned but it does the job, okay? And so if you click on episodes in the um, in the menu there, then you will be taken to the page, the full episode archive with all the episodes I've ever done and there's over 700 of them and you can just scroll all the way down through all of them. Now you might think this is a bit too much for I don't know where to start, but you could do, you know, that you could do searches. So there's the control control F or I think it's control 9 um, on a on a, a PC. I use a Mac so I, I it's actually command F. So if you want an episode about that features something about pronunciation, for example, you could search for pronunciation, and that will highlight all of the times the word pronunciation is included in my archive. So you can see episode 695 was was a conversation with Emma from um, pronunciation with Emma, and we talk about accents, improving your pronunciation and stuff. Uh, other mentions of the word pronunciation, episode 682, I talk about. Uh, um, differences between standard English pronunciation and regional or colloquial accents. Actually, let's go from the old episodes first. Episode 14 was about British and American pronunciation. Episode 20 was about a sort of a funny viral video of an American woman doing a really bad uh, British accent. Um, number 144 is not on YouTube. That's called The Chaos of English Pronunciation. And that's me reading through that famous poem that nobody can read because it contains all the most difficult to pronounce words in the English language. And I try to read it for you. It's even difficult for me, but it does contain lots of words that no one really uses anymore. But anyway, that's an interesting one from a pronunciation point of view. Episode 224 is all about verb tenses and connected speech. And looking at the pronunciation of different types of grammar, right? Like how do you actually pronounce different verb tenses with weak forms and connected speech and stuff. So there you go. That's just a way that you can look through my episode archive. Go to the archive on my website. And if you're on a Mac, do Command F and then type a word that you're interested in. And you can see if I've done an episode about that or if I've mentioned that topic um, on the podcast. Um, Okay, I think on a on a PC it's Control F, isn't it? To do a search like that. Anyway, there you go. Explore the episode archive. Um, <laughs> okay, most people listen to my podcast using an app on their phone, and they listen when they are probably doing something else, like walking around, driving. And if that's the case, please be careful if you're listening to this while driving. Uh, they listen while doing housework, doing exercise, or just simply while breathing. So listening to the audio version on your phone seems to be the normal way to do it. If you listen using a podcast app on your phone and you need to stop listening for whatever reason, for example, you're driving to work and you've reached your workplace and you, you need to stop listening, just stop listening and the app will remember where you stopped and then you can carry on from that point later. So you don't have to listen to an episode in one single go. So if you're thinking, Luke, your episodes are an hour long, but my drive or my commute to work is only 30 minutes long. This is not the podcast for me. Well, try try pausing and then continuing on your way home. Hmm, that's a good idea. Uh, the majority of my audience listen to the audio version of this, and I've been doing the audio podcast for over 12 years now, and I have a big back catalogue of episodes, and I've talked about lots of different things over the years, including some things I'm sure that you would like to hear. So check out the episode archive for the older episodes and use, a ser use the search function on your computer to search for, you know, keywords, um, you know, like stories or certain guests or whatever. It could be a good way to filter your way through the archive. Uh, the Luke's English Podcast app. I have to say something about the Luke's English Podcast app for iPhone users. Now, my app actually disappeared from the Apple 
app store for a couple of days. Um, and this is because I had a payment issue with Apple. When you have an app, when you have an app on the Apple app store, how many times did I say the word app in that sentence? When you have an app on the Apple app store, three was the answer. When you have an app on the Apple app store, you, you need to have an Apple developer account. It's pretty complicated, but you need a special account and you actually have to pay a certain amount every year to have the app on the app store. Google, the Google Play Store, is totally free and much easier. But with Apple, things are more complicated. And at this point, I know that some uh, um, committed Android users are going, well, yes, Luke, this is why, uh, you know, you shouldn't be using a uh, iPhone. Only losers use iPhones. And the app, uh, the, the app store is rubbish. And Apple, are, you know, it's a totally closed system. But with Android, it's much more open. You should have an Android phone. I know people say that sort of thing all the time, don't they? But um, anyway... Um, maybe I should get an Android. But, you know, the, the reason I've got an iPhone, one of the reasons is that my wife's got an iPhone. And it's a bit like that moment in Pulp Fiction when uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character says, oh, I'm, you know, I, 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 I eat meat sometimes, but I'm mostly a vegetarian. I don't eat burgers very much anymore cause I'm, because my, my girlfriend's a vegetarian. And that kind of makes me a vegetarian too. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. Vincent, you ever had a big kahuna burger? Want a bite? They're real tasty. Ain't hungry. Well, if you like burgers, give them a try sometime. Me? I can't usually get them because my girlfriend's a vegetarian, which pretty much makes me a vegetarian. But I do love the taste of a good burger. Mm. Similarly, my wife uses an iPhone, and so I kind of have to use an iPhone too. So the point is my app disappeared from the Apple App Store for a few days because I had a payment issue uh, with my Apple developer program and stuff. And when it when I sorted the issue out and the app came back to the App Store, all my ratings and all my reviews for the app had all gone. And that's three years worth of ratings and reviews. And, you know, as you probably know, ratings and reviews are really important because when people find your app in the App Store or when the app is recommended to people, uh, they check the reviews, they check how many stars it's got, they check the little comments and stuff. All of that stuff's gone. So I don't even know if, if my app is, my app might not be um, promoted um, on the App Store. It might sort of be a bit invisible unless you search for it specifically. And when you do search for it, you, know, you might not see any reviews. So um, could you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? No obligation, of course. But if you use uh, an iPhone and you've downloaded the app and you like it, could you give the app a rating and a review? That would be great if you could do that because it helps to reinstate the app. Um, it makes it more visible and it helps to sort of um, um, reassure people who are thinking of downloading it. Um, it helps to reassure people that it's the real thing and that it's good and that people are happy with it. I know the app is not perfect. By the way, if you ever use the app and you have some problems with it, like episodes don't load or whatever, make sure that you've updated the app, okay? That's really important. Sometimes updates happen, and if you're using the old, unupdated version, it can bug. It can have some bugs. So make sure the app has been fully updated and that you've closed the app and refreshed it and all that stuff, and it should work without any problems. For the most part, the app is reliable and it works. It just You just have to make sure it's updated. You have to make sure you've got enough uh, storage space on your phone and those sorts of things. But anyway, if you're an iPhone user and uh, you have um, the app, then uh, please do give me a, a rating and a review um, because, you know, I lost all my other ratings and reviews. Um, you might be thinking, Luke, this is all very interesting and everything, but how was your holiday? Uh, well, the holiday was great. Um, so I spent about three weeks. So basically, I'm not going to tell you the entire thing. No need to go into full detail like I have in the past. But basically, we got lucky with the weather and we had a really lovely time. Where did you go, Luke? We went to England. Yeah, nice holiday in England. And you, 
I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, if you're looking at the video, I don't know if you can tell, but I, I did get a suntan, I promise I did. We've been back for about two days, and um, so it's been sort of two days that I haven't been exposed to the sun like I was before, and so my tan is probably completely gone now, and I probably look like a pale, pasty extra from The Walking Dead already, uh, but I did get a suntan, I promise. Uh, and yes, it is possible to get a suntan in England in, in August, okay? I know what you think, oh, but it's cloudy, it rains all the time, lol, ha ha ha, and English food's disgusting, ha. Yeah, well, it is possible to get, to get a, a suntan in England. Um, so, yeah, no, lovely time, stayed with my parents for a while, it was nice to see them, I haven't, we hadn't seen them for a long time, you know, and so it was nice to be there um, and um, enjoy the English countryside and lovely English sunshine. We went camping. Um, and it was great. The weather was good. We were lucky. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. But it was uh, we had a lovely, lovely time. Another question you might be thinking is this: What about moving to your new flat and moving to the, a new pod room, Luke? You said before that uh, the podcast would be disrupted. We thought that there would be no podcast for a while because you said everything was going to be uh, taken down and you were, going to, you were going to move to a new flat and that there would be no podcasts while you were moving. Well, building work is is still being done in the new flat. They're removing all the walls and building new walls, We're basically redesigning the entire flat to try and make uh, the best use of the very small space that we're going to have. Um, it's going to be a very small place, but hopefully we are designing it all in a clever way to maximize the space as much as possible. So that means knocking all the walls down and actually even like taking up the floor and totally redesigning everything. Um, I think the downstairs neighbors will probably want to murder us. I think they probably want to kill us because they literally the guys working in the flat have been drilling concrete from the floor da -da 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 -da, like drilling the floor like that and hammering and smashing things with with hammers and stuff so i think the neighbors will they will they will kill us i think they will i think they're going to come into the flat in the in the middle of the night and just murder all of us all three of us uh so if there are no more podcasts ever it's because the neighbors downstairs um strangled me in my sleep or 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 you know, poisoned us or something. I don't know. <laughs> if you are my downstairs neighbours in the new flat and somehow you listen to this, I'm really sorry. I really am. I'm terribly sorry about the noise. We have um, made sure the work is done within the legal hours for work, you know, from, I think it's from nine or 10 in the morning till a certain time in the evening. My wife knows, the workers know. No, no work at the weekends, but you know, sorry about the noise. Okay, uh, but we will invite you for a for a glass of champagne. Does that make up for it? Anyway, um, so the, the the building work's being done on the new place. We're not ready to move yet. That's you know, it's it's all happening a bit later than expected, but probably next month or something. That's when everything's going to be moved, and that's when everything's going to be turned upside down until we move in. Um, also, I told you in a previous episode that I was going to be moving my pod room to a different place that I've that we are actually buying a little room. Um, in Parisian buildings, it's quite common to have rooms at the top of um, of the buildings, and they used they they're rooms that used to be used by the servants in the days when most buildings um, had servants living in them. Uh, the servants would live in these little rooms at the top of the building. And these days, those little rooms obviously still exist, but they're used often for storage or for very small uh, studio apartments for students and stuff like that. Uh, and also some people buy them and turn them into office spaces. And that's what I'm going to do. So we are buying a room that is about five or six meters squared. It's very small. It's basically a cupboard. And that's going to be my pod room or pod cupboard. And it's got a window in it for some natural light, and it's quite a good shape. Uh, so I will be fitting a desk and some shelves, and then it will be the, the official new pod room. But um, I probably won't get the keys to the new pod room until September. And then I'll move in there. 
and yes I'll need to get electricity and internet connected there and to fit a desk and some shelves and then it will be the official new pod room. Um, here are some common questions since going viral on YouTube. I'm, I'm going to try and answer these questions as quickly and succinctly as possible. These are questions that people have, the people who've recently discovered my content on YouTube, these are questions that they're asking me in the comments section. Um, questions which long-term listeners will know the answers to. So long-term listeners, I'm sorry, I'm going to say some things that you already know. But, um, you know, that's all right. I hope you don't mind. Um, so I'm going to try and answer these questions as quickly and succinctly as possible without rambling at all, in fact. So in this rambling episode, here is a section with no rambling. Hmm. I hope that's clear. So yes, this is a rambling episode with a bit where there's no rambling. So okay, anyway, no rambling here. Let's just get straight to the point and keep it simple and try and answer these questions. Common questions from YouTube. I might take this section of the video and upload it as a separate video, right? So, so that the new YouTube people can kind of get to know me a little bit. So common, common questions from YouTube. So where are you from? Okay, so I'm from, I'll give you the very basic sort of life story, but I'm not going to go on about it. So um, born and grew up the first nine or so years of my life in West London, basically. So I lived the first nine years of my life in West London. Then my dad got a job in the Midlands. So we all moved uh, to the Midlands and uh, lived in an area called the West Midlands, um, a little village, a tiny little village in the countryside um, outside Birmingham, sort of between Birmingham and Coventry in the countryside there. So lived there for about 10 years until when I was about 19 years old, I went to live in Liverpool where I studied at, at university. And I studied for three years in Liverpool and then I stayed in Liverpool for an extra year. So I lived there for four years in total. Check out the maths. Three plus one, that's four, isn't it? So I lived in Liverpool for four years and then moved back to the Midlands again. And then I moved to Japan and lived in Japan for two years. And then after that, I came and lived in London again for ages like 10 years or something. And then in 2012, I moved to France, which is where I live. I live in Paris with my wife and my daughter. So where are you from? Basically, I'm from um, West London and the West Midlands, right? So a combination of the two. My accent is basically standard received pronunciation, um, maybe with a few regional um, uh, inflections. You might hear a bit of Midlands in there sometimes. Sometimes I might go a little bit more Midlands and it starts to sound a bit a bit more like I'm from from you know the Midlands. You know it starts to, it comes through a little bit more sometimes. And that was a bit much. I'm pushing it a bit much. A bit a bit there. But um, basically received pronunciation without many regional um, uh, inflections. Hmm. Okay. Uh, right, can you do an episode about X, Y, Z? Can you do an episode about this topic? This is a common question, people requesting episodes. As I said before, check the episode archive on my website. There's a chance I've already talked about the thing that you would like me to talk about. So go to the archive and as, as I said, do a control F search for the keywords you're interested in. Okay. Um, Next, how can I learn English by listening to your podcast? This is a very big question. I've talked about this before. Let me give you a sort of short version. So this podcast can really help you a lot with your English, but it's not the only thing you should do. Uh, it's also important to read a lot. Uh, so find texts which are not too tricky, books, articles, whatever it is, but texts which are not too tricky for you, texts which use fairly modern English and which you actually want to read and read them. Um, study a bit, so use grammar, vocabulary and pronunciation, teaching materials of any kind and work with them. Or when you find new language, when you're reading or listening, check those things in an online dictionary and look through the definitions and examples and pronunciation and synonyms and stuff. So study a bit as well. Um, studying is not the only thing, but it helps. You've got to mix up absorbing English, consuming English, exposing yourself to English, studying English, and then using English. So uh, do lots of speaking if you can. Ideally, 
find someone to have meaningful conversations with, perhaps a teacher or a language partner who can give you some little corrections and encouragement, but use English. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. The five S's, speaking, 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 and speaking. And write on a regular basis too, if you can. So practice writing different types of text or just write a diary every day in which you express your thoughts in English. Um, you know, you've got to express yourself in English regularly in order to find your voice. Um, there isn't just one thing, there isn't just one method that uh, is the only method, right? You've got to try and do lots of different things. A lot of exposure, uh, so input, but also output as well. Uh, sort of focused study and less focused study, meaning just exposing yourself to English or just uh, just talking and just trying to express yourself, that's kind of less focused. And then the more focused stuff where you do uh, pronunciation drills and work specifically on individual sounds and words and sentences, uh, grammar stuff, um, exploring vocabulary and, and trying to remember it and use it. So a mix of these different things, input, output, and focused study and fun as well, just spending time with the language if you enjoy it. So yes, uh, learning English is about learning how to do something, not just learning how to understand something. And we generally get better at things by trying to do them again and again. So, so listen and read a lot and try to speak and write a lot too. That's quite general, that's quite general advice, but there it is. Uh, for more specific advice on how to use the podcast to improve your English, you could listen to these episodes, episode 174 and episode 568. Okay, search the app on your phone or search the uh, episode archive for those episodes. They have some more specific uh, tips. Next question, should I listen to the episodes in order? So should I listen to episodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on or should I you know, listen to them in any order? Should I listen to the new ones first or should I listen to the old ones? Well, it's up to you really. You can just listen to all the new ones as they come out. But if you really want to learn from me properly, then I would suggest listening from episode one, meaning start with episode one and go through them in chronological order. That's a good idea if you, if you, if you really want to learn from me properly and you haven't um, you haven't listened to all my back catalogue. Um, certainly, if you are a lower level learner, the first fifty ish episodes are probably a bit easier to understand, and they have more specific language teaching objectives. Uh, so it would be a good idea to start with them, right? If you are a lower level person and you want to have a more systematic um, process of learning. Yeah, go start with episode one and go through it uh, chronologically. And the idea is that eventually you just kind of get into just listening to me and then, you know, just carry on and make it a habit. But equally, if you just find my episodes fun and interesting, you can listen to them in any order you like. Be aware though, multi-part episodes should be heard in order. So if it's part one, part two, part three, obviously you should listen to part one first, then part two, part three. And I, I, I say that because recently I've done some multi-part series um, and they haven't been listened to in, in the right order, it seems. For example, let's have a look at my YouTube channel. Okay, so... Okay, so recently I did episodes 734 to 736. That was The War of the Worlds, part one, part two, and part three. So the weird thing is this, part one on YouTube has 29,000 views, pretty good. Part two has got 7.2 thousand views. <laughs> and part three has got 11,000 views. Now I understand, you know, it's actually complicated. It's Maybe people just didn't like part one, that's why the other two parts have got lower numbers. But when, you, when, when I tell you about the audio numbers, you'll be, you may be surprised. So it doesn't necessarily mean that people just didn't like it and they chose not to listen to part two. It could be that part one is what's being promoted uh, in the recommended videos and parts two and three are not being promoted, so fewer people are clicking on them. 
But the weird thing is that part one has got like this many views, 30,000 ish. Part, but then part two has fewer views than part three. So more people have listened to part three than part two. Now, maybe again, this is that people are clicking on part three, they're discovering that one first, they're clicking on it, then they're realizing it's part three, and then they are sort of unclicking and going to part one. I don't know, but it's strange, isn't it? That in terms of the number of listeners, in terms of numbers of listens, it's part one, then part three, then part two. Huh? What's going on there? Listen to them in chronological order. But then when I look at my, um, when I look at my stats on uh, the audio side of things, part three has got like a lot more listens than parts two and part one. So is is that just because people just automatically listen to the most recent episode first? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but um, it's weird. It might not just be human decision making. It might just be the way that the episodes are presented to people on different platforms that sort of influences the way that they listen. But anyway, if there's a multi-part series, listen to part one first, then part two, and then part three. Uh, yes. Okay, so that's the multi, multi-part multi episodes. Uh, and also, the other thing is that there might be little private jokes and references from earlier episodes which you might o- might not understand, like the dreaded Russian joke. So it might be worth listening to episodes in chronological order in order to like pick up the different references and different things so that you understand me more and more and better and better as you go through. But really, you can listen to them in any order you want. Uh, the main thing is, if you, I just want you to enjoy spending time listening to the podcast and just do it in whatever way you like. Um, next question: Can you do more story episodes? Yes, I am planning to do more story episodes. There you go. Uh, can you do episodes about grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation? Yes, uh, if I do them all the time. But actually, I focus on uh, that stuff in the premium um, subscription. So consider signing up to Luke's English Podcast Premium for loads of episodes where I focus specifically uh, on grammar, vocab, and pronunciation. And if you want to sign up to Luke's English Podcast Premium, just go to, uh, what's the address again? Do you remember? I do, of course. I'm just seeing if you do. teacherluke.co.uk slash premium info. That's the best uh, way to get started really and it tells you the things you need to know about the premium subscription and just how cheap it is I mean it's very affordable um, uh, you know we're talking like just a just a few dollars a month to get access to all of it and there's over a hundred episodes audio and video episodes PDFs to download and, and, and everything um, and it's you know it's as little as three dollars a month um, which is very reasonable of me, don't don't you think? Um, Next question, can you feature, and then insert name here again? So this is people who want more episodes with certain guests. And um, the most popular guests would be Amber and Paul, uh, my dad, my brother, um, and so on. And actually, um, check the archive again. A lot of my guests have been on the podcast before, especially favorites like Amber and Paul and my family. So check the archive. If you, if there's a guest that you like, check the archive. You might find them uh, in previous episodes. Next one. Can you do video episodes every time? Well, no, not every time for various reasons, which I won't go into now because it might bore you. Uh, I can't do videos every time, but I will try to do them as often as possible. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm starting to develop a, um, a system, which is where I do videos... Um, and I have text on the screen at the same time. I'm sort of recording my screen and recording my face at the same time and then putting it all together in a composite sort of YouTube video thing. Takes a lot longer, but I'm trying to get into the habit of doing that. It's weird when I've got a camera looking at me while I'm recording the episodes. It makes me feel a bit self-conscious. I wonder if it affects the style of podcasting. Um, it, uh, it to an extent it blocks my my mind. It's strange when I'm being looked at. My thought process doesn't quite flow as as easily as normal. So I'm I'm videoing myself as often as possible just to try and get used to it, so that I can start to get more and more comfortable, and I can get to 
the sort of comfortable place where I normally record um, the audio podcasts. I might abandon video. I might, because if it limits my ability to think clearly while I'm recording, then that's not good. We'll see. It's an ongoing experiment doing videos of these podcasts, but uh, I'm going to try and continue doing them. Let me know what you think, uh, listeners, audio listeners. Um, how is it when you listen to an audio episode that's also got a video? D- does it feel different to you? Does it feel different at all? Give me your feedback. Do you think it's all right? Is, do you like this format? Video viewers, similarly, give me your feedback. Give me your comments. Uh, what do you think of the this format, the one that I'm using right now in this episode? Uh, what do you think of it? I'm not promising I can do all the things you want me to do because I can't please all the people all the time, but I'll give it a shot. Um, next question. Is there a transcript for this episode? Lots of people ask about transcripts, naturally, because transcripts are very useful. Well, you know, I will say this. Again, go to my website. You'll find a lot of stuff there, teacherluke.co.uk. And in the menu, click on transcripts. And then you will find uh, another link there that says episodes with transcripts. And that's a link, uh, sorry, that's a list of all the episodes that have transcripts. Okay, and click on them. You'll find the transcripts on my website. Uh, Otherwise, you can go to the episode archive again and just check, you know, go to the archive, click on an episode. Like, for example, I'm randomly in my episode archive and I'm looking at episode 225, which was an episode of Film Club. Those are episodes where I talk about a specific film. And the film I talked about in episode 225 was Taken, the Liam Neeson film. And um, I felt compelled to talk about Taken. And the the, uh, the the Taken speech, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. You know, that whole thing. And I talked a lot about the film Taken in quite a lot of detail. And some of that's got a transcript. There are some notes, bits of script for that. Uh, a script for the classic uh, speech from Taken. And I did a rant about it. Anyway, you'll find some text there. Not a full transcript, but quite a lot. So the point being, check uh, the episode archive, check the pages for each episode. You might find script or notes there. Also, the transcript collaboration. There's a huge uh, library of transcripts which have been made by listeners to this podcast. Some of them have been proofread by other listeners with a with a very high level of English, but you'll find uh, various um, transcripts made by the collaboration project uh, made by learners of English. Uh, and those transcripts, um, some of them are, are not proofread, so they don't ha- uh, they might not be fully accurate. But you'll be surprised. A lot of the proofread transcripts are very accurate and could be useful. And as well, there's the YouTube channel. And uh, almost all of my videos have automatic subtitles switched on. Sometimes, uh, my videos just don't, the, the automatic subtitles just won't switch on. And people say, can you put, please add automatic subtitles? Why haven't you added automatic subtitles? I always add automatic subtitles, but sometimes for some reason YouTube just sort of says, nah, sorry, not possible. And it just doesn't make them available. I don't know why. But I always add them. Um, so for most of the videos, you will see automatic subtitles. Um, and uh, the the automatic subtitles are pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're they're pretty good. So that might be useful for you as well. Otherwise, you could just learn to live without subtitles. Don't rely on subtitles too much. You do need to learn to hear the spoken version of English without the aid of the written version. Although subtitles and scripts can also be a great resource, and you can use them in various ways. Uh, so you should do a bit of both. But don't be over-reliant on subtitles. I know how helpful and great they are, but try listening without, okay? You'd be surprised. You can do it. It's just a question of getting used to it. Um, Another common question is, I can understand you really well, Luke, but I can't understand other native speakers, or I can't understand films when I watch them. The thing about films and TV shows are, I've said this many times before, 
Films and TV shows can be very difficult to understand, okay? Uh, sometimes the audio is not clear. There's lots of music, sound effects, mumbling dialogue, naturalistic stuff. It's a visual medium, so the, the films focus on the visual storytelling often, and the, 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 the dialogue can be very difficult to hear. In, it's difficult for me to hear sometimes. Uh, dialogue. I don't always catch every single line. It can be quite difficult to understand films and TV series. So they are not your benchmark for being able to listen to things. Um, they can be very difficult. Uh, whereas this, um, I'm an English teacher. I don't speak particularly slowly, but I do try to be clear in my communication. Okay, and I talk directly to you, and that is naturally going to be easier to understand. Also, the sound quality is probably quite clear i hope it is um and all of that makes it easier for you to understand so um you know it's natural that you can understand me better because i just am perhaps focusing more effort on communicating with you specifically i'm just uh, yeah i'm not i don't speak really slowly i'm not patronizing you um hmm also speaking to when native speakers speak, they don't. They might speak very, very. Uh, is it quickly? They might connect all their words together in ways that you are not familiar with. Uh, they might use idioms and other phrases or references to things you don't know about. They might speak with accents that you are less familiar with, uh, because naturally, learners of English probably are less familiar with certain regional accents in the UK just because they haven't heard them very much. And so all those things can be can make it very difficult. So yes, it is normal that you understand me better than you understand other native speakers. But it's actually very, it's still very healthy for your English to listen to me because, um, you know, it, having exposure to English that you can understand quite clearly is actually very good for you. You also need to become familiar with other accents and and listening to English in less than perfect circumstances. You do need to do that too. But it's sort of, you know, a balance. It, learning English, I think, is all about a mix and a balance of doing lots of different things. Um, okay. Recent appearances on other people's podcasts. Um, I just want to mention this again. I just want to give a shout out to some other podcasters. Uh, so in the last episode, the last rambling episode, I mentioned the Level Up English podcast with Michael Lavers. He interviewed me fairly recently and we talked about, you know, learning English, doing podcasts, uh, my learning of French. So check it out uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to, you know, listen to that interview with me, the Level Up English podcast. There's also Stories of Language Learners uh, podcast um, and you can find that where you get your podcasts and uh, there's an uh, episode with me, Chales, who does that. Uh, podcast interviewed me and we talked about various things it was very nice so you could listen to those if you want um, and then since I talked about uh, those two I was also interviewed on several other podcasts too so I was interviewed on one which is called something like English Small World Podcast or English Little World Podcast I say something like because uh, the podcast is actually uh, it's made in Taiwan um, and uh, the title of the podcast is in Chinese. If I just look at Pocket Casts on my computer, uh, this is it. Um, so, video view, uh, audio listeners, hello. I'm actually showing on the video screen. Um, I'm trying to show on the video screen the uh, the podcast I'm talking about. So it's you can see that it's all written in in Chinese characters, uh, but it translates as pretty much English small world podcast uh, by Apex Language Consulting and Training in Taiwan. Could also be described as the Apex Podcast, Apex Language Podcast. Hmm, and how are you going to find it? I'm not sure. Um, actually, you could search for this Apex English Podcast dot Podbean dot com apex english podcast dot podbean dot com um, i'm going to write that apex english podcast dot podbean dot com uh, okay and uh, that's really it was a really interesting 
podcast. It was really nice to be invited on that. Um, and uh, two guys from Taiwan who do podcasts for learners of English. They talk about a great variety of topics. There's a mix of Chinese being spoken and English. It's mostly English with a few little bits of assistance in Chinese. Um, but um, I was invited on there with Michael Lavers. So the two of us were guests on the podcast at the same time. We recorded two episodes. The first one, what's the first one about? Hold on a minute. Let me see. First one was about the business of podcasting. So Michael and I talked about the process that we go through when making our podcasts and, you know, sort of uh, lifting the lid on making podcasts and stuff. And then the second episode we did was about how to better understand British English. And we talked about different British English accents, differences between British English and American English and, and stuff like that. So there's that. And also I was invited on the Clark and Miller English podcast. Um, that's a podcast run by an English teacher called Gabriel Miller. The Clark and Miller English podcast. And I talked to Gabriel about English comedy, British comedy, which, as you may know, is one of my favourite subjects. So we talked about the ins and outs of humour in English and uh, the humour, sort of the pragmatics of, of, of using humour in communication in British English and also British comedy shows and our favourite shows and sort of why those shows can be very difficult using those shows as English as an English teacher and so on. So you could listen to the Clark and Miller English podcast and uh, um, my episode with Gabriel is on there sort of fairly recently. You just scroll down through his episode archive and you'll see the episode with me. Okay, Charlie Watts. Um, Oh, we've been going for an hour and 15 minutes, so I need to wrap this up fairly quickly. How much stuff do I have? Okay, so I've got this, and then I've got a couple of messages from listeners, and then we're, we're going to be done. I could ramble on about Charlie Watts for ages. I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, Charlie Watts was the drummer in the Rolling Stones, okay? The drummer from the Rolling Stones. Let's just quickly Google Charlie Watts. Hold on a minute. And uh, Charlie uh, sadly died yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just see what I can find here. Okay, this this will this will do. I think. Let's have a look at the Guardian's uh, page here. Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts dies aged eighty. The musician's publicist says he died peacefully in a London hospital, surrounded by his family. He was the calm, brilliant eye of the Rolling Stones rock and roll story. So, okay, what can I say about Charlie Watts? Well, I mean, I'm a drummer. I've got some drumsticks here. Just in case, just in case you, you, you didn't believe me, look, I have drumsticks, so I must be a drummer, right? But I, I'm a drummer and I've played drums for a long time. And certainly Charlie Watts is one of those drummers that was a big influence. And the thing about Charlie Watts is that well, okay, so this is a big deal because obviously he was the founding member of the Rolling Stones, a founding member of the Rolling Stones. Actually, he didn't join at this. He wasn't there from the very beginning. As far as I know, he joined a little bit later, but before they really became successful. And it was a case of, I think, when Charlie joined the group, they really found their formula and um, then they were able to really make a success of themselves. Um but um, Charlie Watts was an absolutely integral part of the Rolling Stones' sound and the absolute backbone of their, their whole sound. And, um, you know, I've read Keith Richards' book and he talks in very, very, in that book, he talks in very, very positive terms about Charlie Watts and about how important he is to uh, the whole sound of the group. Uh, solid backbeat. That's one of the things about the Rolling Stones is that they are a dance band. They were like an R&B group. The Beatles, in terms of their music, very varied, lots of different types of music. It's all about the songwriting and the personalities. As you know, I'm a huge Beatles fan. I'm also a big Rolling Stones fan, uh, but they it's a different kettle of fish. Um, 
they're a different type of band. They're more of a dance band. It's the sort of band that you can dance to, right? And a big part of that was Charlie Watts' drumming style. Now, Charlie actually was was a jazz musician as well. And I think he had a jazz band um, too. So he was a very competent musician. But in the Rolling Stones, he played a very minimal style. And the thing about his drumming, the, the, the thing about his drum style, this is actually a very small detail that makes a very big difference. Now, most drummers um, will play four uh, beats to the bar with their right hand on the, on the hi-hat, like that, and then the back beat on the snare, right, like that, and probably one and three with the, uh, with the bass pedal. Right? But that hi-hat is always going one, two, three, four. Now, what Charlie Watts did is he actually lifted his hand off the hi-hat when he played the snare drum. So instead of going... He's lifting his hand off when his left... He's lifting up his right hand when his left hand goes down. So you get... Right, that's, it's hard for me to explain that just with my voice. Video viewers can see me doing it. <laughs> right? Lifting the right hand off the, he- the hi-hat when playing the snare. Now, the, the difference is that that really accentuates that snare and it kind of gives space to that bam snare sound just gives that extra bit of space and in making funky dance music sometimes it's all about creating little spaces in the rhythm right that's what kind of creates the groove and charlie watts was just a master of doing that just playing only the right notes at the right moment and creating little spaces he would also do that thing that drummers do when they lift the hi-hat up so the hi-hat is basically two cymbals that, that are on top of each other kind of thing. And you you have a pedal, and using your left foot, if you're right-handed, you'd normally use the left foot, you can open the hi-hats and close them, which creates, you can make different sounds. So normally with the hi-hats closed, it goes tit, 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 like that. When you open the hi-hats a bit, you can get that kind of sounds, like you would get in sort of heavy punk rock, kind of thing and you can as you open and close the hi-hats you can get a slightly different sound a tighter sound a more loose sound but also you can do these things where you hit the hi-hat and immediately close it and that creates that kind of sound like you get in classic drum beats you know that sound that Um, and so Charlie Watts would use that sound as well sometimes very sparingly I don't know I can't really do it justice but he just had a very unique style a very minimal style and as a person I understand that he was a lovely guy a gentleman he was very stylish he was always very well dressed in very smart suits very sharply dressed um, uh, he was uh, a family man and kind of managed to maintain a a, a, a successful, long-lasting marriage and a fairly normal family life, despite being in this crazy rock and roll band, which is quite, quite an achievement, I think. So basically, what this means is that the fact that Charlie Watts has died, obviously, we're sad because we're not going to get any more of his music. But also, it could be potentially the end of the Rolling Stones, because, I mean, they're capable of continuing, of course, Mick and. Keith and um, Ronnie um, obviously could continue, uh, but it might never be the same again without that unique style of drumming that Charlie Watts brought and the way that Charlie and Keith would lock in together, especially. We're never going to get that again. And this is very, it's a very sad, sad time for music lovers because that unique thing, that recipe that the Rolling Stones had, it's just, it's never going to be the same again. I'm interested to see what the Stones do, but I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they stopped now. I wouldn't be surprised. 
So it's a sad time for Rolling Stones fans. But this occurred to me yesterday, right? When I was thinking about this, this occurred to me. So the Rolling Stones, Stones? Rolling Stones, no. The Rolling Stones seem to be missing a drummer and a bass player, right? And, you know, I hear that Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney are available, right? And Ringo Starr's a drummer, Paul McCartney is a bass player. The bass player, by the way, in the Rolling Stones retired sort of years ago. They've got a new bass player, but, and he's great, but you could say that the Rolling Stones are missing a drummer and a bass player and Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney might be available. Um, so imagine if they formed a kind of Beatles Rolling Stones supergroup at the very end of their careers. Wouldn't that be brilliant? Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, um, Mick on vocals, Ronnie and um, Keith on guitars. Some kind of amazing Rolling Stones supergroup. Beatles combination but of course nobody could replace the people who are gone like Charlie Watts and, and John Lennon and, and George Harrison but still it would be fun for the four it's not four is it it's five with Ronnie five remaining guys to get together and perform I I doubt it would happen but I actually I think that they would be an amazing band but there'd probably be ego you know ego struggles uh, between uh, Mick Jagger and Paul McCartney for stage limelight, I imagine. That's my door. Hold on. I've got to go and answer the door. Back in a minute. Too late. I think I got there too late. The person's gone. Probably the postman who kind of rings once. Two seconds. Rings again. Two seconds. And disappears. I think Keith and Paul are pretty... Keith and Paul are pretty tight. And Ringo is friendly with everyone and still drumming. So there you go, the Rolling Beatles. Can you imagine? I hope that it happens. I don't think it will. <laughs> but uh, I don't think there's any suggestion that's going to happen. But it's just a sort of weird little dream of mine that the Rolling Stones and the Beatles could somehow combine to create the Rolling Beatles. Uh, the Beatles Stones. Okay, we're nearly done. I just want to say this. Remember the the Wispolep competition, right? Remember that that was that was actually awesome, right? Uh, listening to um, listeners tell their stories, meeting some amazing listeners, and you know we had some great episodes that came out of that. Well, um, I got a, a, a while ago. I mean, Wispolep is is done and dusted now, but. Um, I wanted to read this out. So I got this message a while ago. This is from Leo from Brazil, who didn't make it to the last 16. So Leo was one of the competitors. Leo appears at about two hours and 24 minutes into the Wispolep 1 video. Do you know what that video is? If I go onto my YouTube channel, boom, 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 and find it. I actually uh, created a video with all of the... Um, um, competition entries from the people who didn't get into the last 16 and I made a video <clears throat> relationship to survive okay yeah, this is it that's me and my I'm just listening to that part of that video Leo um, this is on YouTube by the way there are time codes for every single person and if we go down to Leo from it Leo from Italy is it this is it Leo from Brazil it's Leo from Brazil Okay, to hear from Leonardo from Brazil. So this, this is his original entry. Hi, Master Luke. Here is one more ninja lapster leaving the shadows. And I decided to come because I'm concerned with you. Yes, with you, your family, and all your lapsters. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Leonardo. I'm from Brazil. And I have followed your storyline and your podcasts these last six years. I've identified myself a lot with your character because we have similar histories of life. We were born in the 70s. We have older brothers. We are skeptical and believers in science. We watched Star Wars, played video game, and drank a lot in the beginning of adulthood. I have to stop that there, right? Because um, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I do want to read the um, uh, the message that Leo sent me, 
right? The, the point is there were so many people who sent great recordings and who didn't get through to the last 16, right? This is one of the points I want to make. And I want to share this uh, message from Leo because it is a very real example of someone who has connected the learning of English to their personal life in a very human way, which means making mistakes, acknowledging motivational issues, and finally coming to terms with the fact that they have to take responsibility for learning, and the end result is great. I, I, I was, you know, um, it was a pity that I couldn't share more of these stories, uh, but I keep coming back to some people because I feel like there are still worthy things, uh, uh, things that are still worth sharing. So th this is obviously a written, sorry, this is an excellently written email that obviously just came out of Leo without him planning it and rewriting it. I think he just wrote it all in one go. What do I mean by that? I think there are, what I mean by that, I suppose, is that there are some little mistakes in here, which I will correct as we go. So Leo has done really well with his English and, uh, as have, let me say that sentence again, Leo has done really well with his English, as have so many other Lepsters, and this is what he wrote, and I just wanted to share it. I'll correct things as we go. So Leo from Brazil, Leo said, I had so much fun during this competition, even though I didn't pass the first round. Let me tell you something, I've been meaning to write it for a long time. You know, I need to be frank, I was so happy and voluntarous to participate so I'm pretty sure that voluntarist isn't a word in English. Maybe it, maybe it is, but uh, it's not one that I think is used often. So to be, I know what that means. You, you, you want to volunteer. It's like keen. I think keen is probably a better word. Let's say I was so happy and keen to participate. Participate has got P-A-R-T-I-C-I-P-A-T-E. I was so happy and keen to participate that when I recorded my pitch, I wasn't thinking about what I should have said, but only how to say it, meaning very slowly and clearly. My thought was, I want everyone to understand me because I guess that there are different types of Lepsters, people who've just started and people who've been listening for years. I know exactly how you feel, Leo. Every time I switch on my recorder and start recording, I think, oh, should I be grading my English? There will be a lot of people listening to this who've got fairly lower, you know, who've got a lower level, maybe new listeners. I don't want to alienate them. So I know what you mean. You've got to decide. Do you speak slowly and clearly and make everything very, very simple? Or do you just kind of speak more naturally and just kind of use phrases that pop into your head and stuff, even though it might be difficult for certain learners? So I, I know what you meant, Leo. That I think Leo decided to speak in the slower and more careful way so that um, most listeners would understand him. So let me continue Leo's message. So I decided to speak that way. I guess the result was that I made myself sound like a robot. Hmm. I don't want to be too hard on myself, but knowing that there is always room for progress helps me on the journey. It tells me that I could be working even harder on my English while at the same time having fun. I love this language, and when I was younger, it was so frustrating and tiring. You know the vibe, you know the vibe, Luke, because you're learning French and you need it in a way or another, meaning you need it in one way or another. As a non-native speaker, I knew as a child that I had to learn English sooner or later. I was only nine years, it was only nine years ago that I started to want to learn it. And did I start then? Of course not. Nah, too easy. Let's just procrastinate for another five or six years. So, okay, as a child, he knew he had to learn it. And then nine years ago, he decided he wanted to learn it, but he still didn't start doing, doing it then because as a human being, of course, he procrastinated for another few years. Let's continue. And so, as the story goes, in 2016, in November, I swear, maybe he wrote this to me in November, it's quite possible. God, it's been nearly a year I've been meaning to read this out. In November I, 2016, I started Googling Learn English Online on YouTube and other websites, but I wasn't satisfied. I was looking for something that wasn't boring or slow paced. I desired something interesting and alive that could help me defeat my tendency of quitting on learning the language. Help me defeat my tendency to quit. It's actually 
your tendency to do something and it's your tendency to quit and then after quit you can just have an ing to quit doing something so i desired something interesting and alive that could help me defeat my tendency to quit learning the language why because english represented this scary monster in my head and i had more worries than solutions at the time so i felt the need to challenge myself and as a beginner your podcast seemed quite advanced and not doable i thought i couldn't possibly succeed in understanding everything that was being said episode after episode so leo was a bit intimidated by now he needed a challenge right that's it and he decided that my podcast was probably a little bit too difficult for him so he but despite that he started to listen and he was sure that he wouldn't be able to understand everything and then continues leo at a certain point i don't know when or how it just clicked i think around episode 60 or 70 i suddenly realized i was understanding everything on the podcast at that point after years of procrastination failures and half attempts of learning half attempts at learning the language i felt like that's it i got it finally now let me just tell you that i was aware of how much work i still needed and need now but believe me i cracked the code i finally unlocked this thing i got this that's how i felt but i need to add that although I had finally found the resource I was looking for, I wasn't disciplined enough for self-studying, and I al- and I already knew very good books like Raymond Murphy and colleagues. But as you said so many times that I couldn't possibly remember, you need to take responsibility for the learning process. Responsibility doesn't have an A in it. It's it's uh, respond S I B I L I T Y. Yes, that's right. You. It's true, ultimately, we all have to take our own responsibility for the learning process. It's true. Leo says, I really liked episode 686. You and Christian from Kangaroo English said a very important thing. Sometimes people think that when one wants to learn a language, he or she simply needs to um, take lessons from a teacher saying, okay, I'm here, just fill me up with English. That's fill me up, F-I-L-L. Not feel me up. Don't feel me up. Get your hands off me. Don't feel me up. No, fill me up with English, so to speak. But if that was the case, how much easier things would be. So it's true. People do have that attitude, don't they, Leo? That people sit themselves down in a classroom or in front of a teacher and go, right, paid my money. Now fill me up with English. Go. Um, But uh, it's not as simple as that. That doesn't work. Um, Leo says there is that film with Keanu Reeves what's its name what was its name oh yeah Johnny Mnemonic from 1995 in which they put data inside his brain and he has to carry it as a courier uh, I believe do you know that film ladies and gentlemen Johnny Mnemonic happened came out about four years before the Matrix Keanu Reeves is a guy and they put loads of data in his head and he has to just like remember it and carry it like he's like a sort of USB storage device. <laughs> Whoa. I was about to say his acting is maybe on a par with a USB storage device, but that wouldn't be fair because we all love Keanu Reeves. Anyway, the point is, says Leo, it doesn't work like that, like Johnny Mnemonic. Um, us learners, we are the ones that need to do the hard work guided by our teachers. In the Lepster's case, by you, of course, you're the one who unlocks all of this. I followed a lot of advice that you gave, and let me tell you, thank you, they worked wonders. Should be it worked wonders, because advice is an it, not a they. Advice is uncountable, it's it. I followed a lot of advice you gave me, and let me tell you, thank you, it worked wonders. So yeah, 80% of what I know comes from here, from Luke's English Podcast, wow. But there is also something I love doing as much as possible, and that's creating my own learning bubble where I'm immersed in the language as much as possible. Your podcast is a great way to do that. You definitely re- revolutionized my English app- um, my English apprehension a- a- acquisition, you mean? Because apprehension is not the, white, not the right word here, Leo. 
Apprehension is when you're not sure about something. If you're app apprehension is is when you worry about the future or have you have a fear that something unpleasant's going to happen. That's not the word you you need. Comprehension maybe. Comprehension. Hmm. Comprehension, acquisition, and assimilation. Comprehension is when you understand, right? Acquisition is when you uh, pick up English, and assimilation is when um, you sort of absorb English, or it's sort of English feeds in and becomes part of your 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 English that you use. Okay, so. Um, Apparently, Luke's English podcast revolutionised Leo's understanding and ability to pick up and and incorporate uh, English into his uh, into his um, vocabulary and speaking and so on. And so I'm thankful for that. Not only the language, but your culture too. I remember episode 100 of Luke's English podcast going to the pub. Wow, so many years ago. That's right. It is. It's like. 10 years ago maybe and that's how it felt in this journey sitting in a pub with a friend chatting about so many things um that was the classroom and episode 99 the rotary sushi bar of english uh, where you pick up all the different portions of english that's right that was a rambling episode one of the very early rambling episodes episode 99 the rotary sushi bar of english and i kind of got this idea that my podcast could be like a rotary sushi bar you know those sushi bars where the little plates of sushi come past you on a, a conveyor belt that's a bit like this podcast the english is just coming past like that and you can just pick bits of english up as you go you don't have to get all of it a lot of it just you let it go you can't possibly eat it all, but just pick off little bits as they come past, things that you fancy. Oh, that's a bit nice bit of English. I'll have that. So it's like that. Yeah. Um, and Leo says, okay, so let's wrap this up, shall we? Yes, Leo, let's do that. Because, and it's true for this episode as well. I need to wrap this up. Uh, thank you for all of this. I had and I'm having so much fun with Luke's English podcast and knowing that so many people are part of this community is a strong reminder that in the end we're all from Lepland. We all share this passion for the language and as our teacher said many times it's all about connection not perfection. I need to say that is not my phrase okay that that's not that's a quote from the girls from All Ears English, the All Ears English podcast, um, that's theirs, okay? That is their catchphrase. And whenever I say it's all about connection, not perfection, I always make a point of saying, as the girls from All Ears English always say. So I'm quoting them because they're right about that. It's true. It is about connection, not perfection. It's about using language to, to make connections with people and not just focusing on achieving some sort of utopian idea of perfection and not using English to communicate it's like you know basically the the point I'm making is some students they think I need to learn 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 to English and then when I am ready then I will start communicating but that's not the right way to do it you have to be communicating in order to improve you're never going to get proper uh, competent English unless you're actually using it and practicing your communication with it so it's not something you study in a book for, for years and then poof, now I can speak English. No, you have to learn it by doing it. Right. And Leo adds at the end, PS, let me do let me do it at least once. What? He says, I'm certainly rushing to get to the next episode. Ha 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 ha. But Leo, that doesn't work. It doesn't work for you, Leo, because you're not Russian. You're Brazilian. So you can't say, I'm Russian to listen to the next episode because you're not Russian. You're, you're Brazilian. You see you see how the, the joke works, everybody? It only works if you are Russian. Then you can say, I'm Russian to do something. Otherwise, it's like, I'm... I get the idea, Leo, okay? It, and I appreciate the... Uh, appreciate the effort what I, I appreciate the reference and here i am now explaining the russian joke again you you did it leo you did it to me uh, and then leo says but anyway until then bye 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 all the best leo well that's a nice email leo it took me bloody ages to read it out on the podcast but i did it in the end um i think the email speaks for itself i don't need to 
say much more about it. There's just one more <laughs> email that I got. I can't remember when I got this, but um, I've got a message for for Hamad. Hamad, hello. Is your name Hamad? This might be a message for you. Um, so this is a message from Hamad's wife. I think it's Hamad's wife. Yes. So it goes like this. Hi, Luke. I hope you're doing great in these COVID-19 times. Doing all right. One of your very dedicated listeners is Hamad, my husband, who annoyingly keeps listening to your podcasts in the bathroom while showering, even when he's changing his clothes. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, one of your dedicated listeners is Hamad, my husband, who annoyingly keeps listening to your podcasts in the bathroom while showering, even when he's changing his clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a nice thought for me there. Imagine Hamad, a grown man, um, removing his clothes, washing himself all over, and spending time in the bathroom doing who knows what with his clothes off, all the while listening to me, talking to him, listening to my voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um Aisha, Hamad's wife, continues. She says, He keeps waking me up from my sleep during his morning rituals. And she's put rituals in inverted commas, like speech marks. He keeps waking me up from my sleep during his, during his morning rituals. What are his morning rituals? <laughs> what does this involve? This is a bit odd. Or any time he goes to the bathroom to do anything. Like, really, anything. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a bit odd. I'm thinking, what? Hamad keeps going into the bathroom to do anything. And while he's doing there, sometimes with his clothes off, he is listening to my podcast the whole time, probably too loudly. Aisha says, please let him know I sent you this message and, pl and tell him to please stop listening to your podcast in the bathroom. Sincerely, a concerned yet disturbed wife. Aisha, thank you. <laughs> Sent from my iPhone. <laughs> All right, so Hamad, Hamad, mate. Look, your wife Aisha has reached out to me, okay? Hamad, this is an intervention, okay? You need to stop listening to my podcast in the bathroom. Stop doing weird unknown things in the bathroom while you're listening to this. The main thing, I mean, you know, to be honest, you can do whatever you want in the bathroom. And you can listen to my podcast while you're doing it if you want. That's not the issue. The issue is that you're disturbing Aisha because the, I think you're listening to the podcast too loudly and it's waking her up. I don't know, maybe the bathroom is like next to the bedroom or something. And, you know, she's like <sighs> sleeping soundly. And then she hears, you're listening to Luke's English podcast. For more information, visit, did it, you know. Du -du 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 you're listening. She's getting that and she can't sleep. So Hamad, just a little word of warning lower the volume in the bathroom okay or get some headphones and listen you know get out of the shower dry yourself off listen on headphones you don't want to make Aisha angry <laughs> I don't know what she will do don't push her too far okay okay all right well that's it. That's the end of this episode. Listeners, if you listen or if you know anyone who listens to the podcast in a weird place, let me know. I'm always curious to know uh, the context in which you're listening to this podcast. Um, yeah, if you think that you listen to the podcast in, a, in, a, an, in an original way, please let me know. It would be interesting to, to find out uh, if there are people listening while flying planes and things like that. I'm always curious about that. So let me know. But that's the end of this episode. It's been super duper long. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. I'm not going to do a song this time because I'm not ready. So apologies for the music fans. Um, okay, maybe next time. This has been a long, long episode. Thanks for sticking with this all the way to the end. Well done. Well done, guys. <coughs> special round of applause for being a super duper, extra super special listener. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to, um, you know, subscribe on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not subscribed. Subscribe now. Uh, 
and uh, leave a positive review for the app on the App Store if you would, uh, just because that's going to help sort of, you know, I need all those reviews again. I'm going to stop talking now. It's been a pleasure. I'll speak to you again next time. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. Bye, 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 bye.